The video that you're about to watch walks you through how to replace the trailing arm bushings on an O2 V70 XC. Now the trailing arm bushings are located right here. And what happens over time is that they, well, they, um, they crack, they wear, and it results in a pretty vague feeling in the rear end when you're taking corners. So the handling is definitely affected. Um, they're not, the part's cheap. The installation of the part itself is pretty straightforward. However, there is a fair amount of work to get to these bushings. Unfortunately, what this means is one, dropping the exhaust. In, in my case, I had other work to do like installing a new uh, sway bar from an R Volvo. I replaced a couple of other bushings. I replaced some axles and I replaced my rear hub. So it was worthwhile to do all that. And I was okay with dropping the exhaust. And in fact, in my case, I cut the rear section of the exhaust and pulled it right out. You need to do that because um, to get access to the bushing, you need to drop the subframe. To drop the subframe, you need to drop the rear differential. And finally, to drop the rear differential, you need to at least lower the exhaust and move it aside. I'm pretty sure that lowering and moving the exhaust would give you enough access, um, but I can't confirm that because as I said, in my case, I just cut the rear section of the exhaust right off. The Volvo instructions also suggest that you should be disconnecting the viscous coupler from the prop shaft. I tried to do that. I got the six bolts off the prop shaft, but I couldn't dislodge the shaft from the viscous coupler. So I just carefully lowered the prop shaft and viscous coupler together um, when I lowered the rear differential. I can tell you it did make a noticeable difference. It's much tighter through the turns. Although, to be fair, I did put a, an upgraded sway bar on there as well, so who knows, it may be a combination of those two things that did the trick. No real special tools required for this job. It helps if you have an impact wrench. Uh, in fact, I would strongly recommend some impact tools on standby. And as you'll see in the video, to push that um, bushing out and to reinstall, I got some supplies from Home Depot and from Fastenal and I did my best to list those in the, the video itself. Hope this is of help to someone out there. Thank you. One is to jack the car up nice and high because you're gonna be working underneath the car a fair amount. And the second step is to remove the axle bolts. I've removed mine already. They're 14 millimeter. They just, they come out relatively easily. And then once you've done that, you wanna verify that the axles actually move. You do that by simply inserting anything into the hole and moving. All right, so mine is moving on this side. Is there movement here? Yes, excellent. Both sides move, so there won't be any issues with the shaft stuck in the hose. Next step is to remove the rear exhaust. So I've started by taking a pry bar and prying out the rubber uh, which we call it vibration dampener for the muffler. So I've taken that out and I'm now going to take the sawzall and go to the center and cut the exhaust in half. So this was based on, I drove over to my local muffler shop and asked them what they recommended given that it's just one long run with no flange and they said just cut it right next to a weld in a spot that's easy to weld, uh, easy for them to weld back together and I'm golden. So that's what I'm doing. Just enough on that. Wow. Use your protection. Okay, and now I just, if I take off these two bolts, then the whole exhaust can come off. I don't really need to do it, actually. You know what, this is looking pretty easy. Yeah, we'll just do it there. Whoops. 
today. it out from there and also right here so you can see one of them was left on there and the other has come out so now I can get, set this aside what I haven't explicitly called out is that I need to get I need to lower the exhaust or remove the exhaust because I need to lower the, the rear differential and you obviously cannot lower the rear differential uh, because it butts up against the exhaust if it's there you need to lower the rear differential so that you can then lower the subframe to get good access to those bushings. I'm just gonna put the whole exhaust right in the trunk. What the instructions call for next is to, before lowering the subframe, is that you wanna disconnect the viscous coupler from the propeller shaft. And so my intention was to do that next. So what I'm doing here is taking a glance at the viscous coupler, looking at the Allen bolts that you need to disconnect to take the prop shaft off, um, just so that I can prepare for next steps. To make a very long story short, I did get those Allen bolts out, which was great, but the prop shaft would absolutely not disconnect from the viscous coupler. It was, um, I used uh, an impact um, chisel. I shook it around, I used the impact chisel again at different angles and it, the two pieces just wouldn't come apart. Um, the reason you want to do this is to minimize the stress on the viscous coupler on the prop shaft when you lower the rear differential. In the end I gave up and re lowered the rear differential anyway very carefully monitoring, actually I'm, I'm lying there, <laughs> I didn't do it very carefully, but you can still do it. Just do it carefully and and uh, monitor the stress that you're putting on that um, viscous coupler as the as the rear differential lowers. Um, you could also remove the center bracket for the prop shaft bearing to to give yourself a little bit more maneuvering room. I did not, and the job turned out just fine. Next step is to detach the sway bar link from the sway bar. 18, all right, good. And then an insert, uh, probably a T40. You will obviously notice here that I've removed the dust shield for the hub. You don't have to do that. I was replacing the entire spindle as part of this job, which is the only reason that that dust shield is off and that I've disconnected the rear lateral link. You don't need to do that either. Just uh, the only uh, bit you do need to remove is the piece that you're watching me remove right now, which is that one bolt that holds the trailing arm to the, the spindle. That does need to come off because you're gonna to need to take that trailing arm right off uh, to get full access to the, um, the bushing at the front on the subframe. 
The bolt is 17 millimeters and it's a welded nut so you don't have to counter hold it as you remove it. There we go. Let's see if that works. Need some ear protection. Okay. I didn't record me doing this on the other side, but obviously you've got to do this. You've got to remove the same bolt on the driver's side, left-hand side of the vehicle. That out. This is a first view of what this job is all about, which is to replace that bushing right there in the subframe. It's hard to appreciate from this video footage just how much movement Yikes. there was in that bushing, but it's a it's a big amount um, and Volvo in fact upgraded the design of that bushing to make it a little bit more robust so let's get at it I'm gonna have to drop this plastic cover that um, covers the differential and then I've got to disconnect the handbrake on both sides as well this is the first handbrake uh, bracket that I'm removing here I didn't film the removal of the second one but obviously you need to take both off you see me unclipping the parking brake cable from one of the control arms. You'll need to do that on the other side as well. Each parking brake cable connects to each control arm with a little plastic clip. What you see me doing here is removing the two handbrake cable brackets that's necessary for you to be able to fully drop that um, rear differential. Taken the cover off, eight bolts, plastic cover that covers the differential. The only bolt left holding that in is this one here. And now I've got to loosen that last bolt and I'm gonna to need to support this as I lower it. Thank you. 
out just a little bit earlier. There we go. I've got the I've got it down got the differential down yikes okay to take the rear trailing arms out it's pretty straightforward it's a 17 millimeter uh, bolt and it's a captive nut on the other side, so you just have to take a 17 and put an 18 onto that. So it's terrible lighting here, it's evening. And um, just take it out that way. It comes out relatively easily. Look, taking a good look at this trailing arm, and there is just no room in front of it to get an apparatus in to push that new bushing in. And then in behind, you can see there's a little hole in the arm. There's a gap, but that's about it. And in behind, it's kind of useless because all you've got is an access hole that is very small to get at the rear of the trailing arm. So I don't know how you do this without a, get ready for it, special Volvo tool. As I look at this, I'm also thinking, I probably need to drop the subframe at least uh, four inches to get good access from the right-hand side where that um, spanner is right now. It's always interesting to look to look at the bushing, it doesn't look as bad when there's absolutely no pressure on it, but this thing is totally cooked. So you can see, here's another view. There's no room back there, man. I don't know how you get back there. Okay, so I'm lowering the su subframe bolt just a hair. And we're gonna see what that gives us. At this point, I've got the entire hub, spindle, and uh, axle removed. That is not necessary if you are removing or replacing the uh, subframe bushing for the trailing arm. I was doing that because I had other work going on at the same time. All right, and what you see me doing here is loosening the first rear subframe bolt to attempt to gain better access to that bushing. Careful not to disconnect it totally. Oh. Let's see. So we can have Gives me pretty reasonable access, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to mark where this bushing is supposed to be. Ugh. on this. Okay, good. So 
where the two marks are. Let's try and take this out now. All right, this is footage of the removal of the bushing on the passenger side, the right-hand side of the vehicle, not the left, but you get the idea. I need the subframe to be lower. So, subframe drops really low all of a sudden, so I think I'm set. I'm just going to chop a hole. I'm going to cut a groove right through, and hopefully that allows me to just pop this out. There you go. Right through, came out, left a little notch. Okay. So I went by Princess Auto, and what I need is something narrow enough that will fit into the space in the control arm. Um, so I looked at this, this uh, caster wheel, and it looks to be nice and narrow and wider than the actual... Um, trailing arm bushing. So what I'm going to do is drill out the center of this wheel and then use a file to smooth out the inside and that will allow me to have a nice um, cylinder ready for pressing in the new bushing. All right well here's the somewhat not yet final product. I'm also going to use a 2.325 cap from a bearing press kit. So that's how we're going to press this in. The other bit that you see me using to press in the bushing is this plumbing piece. Um, here's the skew. 2245483126. Yeah, it's a bit by Ipex, and just as this was this proved to be invaluable because it, um, it's got a nice thick. Both sides are nice and thick, and the diameter is such that you can press this. You can put this right up against the bushing um, to press it in, which is great. Yeah, let's see here, just to give you an idea of dimensions. Uh, two and three eighths maybe or something. Two and three eighths wide with the inner at one and a half or something. And on the other side, same sort of thing. Yeah. And then we're gonna use things that I picked up from Fasten all. Right, and on the back, I need one more cap. On the back, I'm going to use a 2.830 inch cap from my press kit again. Here are the bits and pieces I got from Fasten all. 7 sixteenths bolts of three different lengths to a accommodate the fact that as you compress the bushing in, you're gonna to need to substitute the longer bolt for shorter and shorter bolts. These are great. They're kind of, they're uh, longer nuts, uh, which ensures that you won't strip them. And then a couple of washers for good measure. So the codes from Fastenal, you can see them here. Here's the six inch bolt. Here's the eight inch bolt. You'll notice they're all seven sixteenths. Here's the seven inch bolt, and here is the, um, the nut, the thicker nut. That's the skew for those. Hopefully that helps. Don't try this with uh, three eighths. Feedback online suggests that if you try 
pressing in the bushings with some 3 8 hardware, you're just going to strip the threads. So this is, uh, this is what you want to go with. You need to find something that you can slip in here that you'll then be able to take out afterwards because it's quite possible this protrudes, this bushing will protrude and if you have something that's too thick it'll be stuck in there and rattling away forever. So what you want to do is take your gizmo, bring it to the side that still has the bushing, test it with the bushing still in place. Put it in and it just fits. And will I be able to press it up against it? Slip the cap in. Okay. Slip this bushing in. Okay. Push the cap forward. Let's go get that frozen bushing. I think. Like that. Like this. That's good. Okay, we're ready to go here. This is what I got. I got a washer in behind, or a, you know, a regular. I stuck an extra um, cap in behind there because the washer or the nut screw was a little too long. Put a 17 in behind here. Can I reach? That's good. 17 fits. Wrench fits. Right this time. Looking good. I'm gonna keep going. Same setup at the front. Uh, shorter bolt. Alright, I basically used the impact. I think the camera fell over it at some point, but uh, there it is. And I'm just going to double check. And that looks like... Let's see the other side. Uh, other side of the thing, so. Little bit more, tiny bit more. A couple of cranks. Mm. One more crank. There we go, we're good. Take this all apart. Good. Oh, that looks great, doesn't it? Good.